So you would think that if GM reached an all-time high, Nikola's probably doing well today, right? Wrong. What is going on guys? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am all smiles today because my portfolio is absolutely through the roof. So before we go any farther and before we get to talking about stocks and everything that's going on in the market and what I think you guys should be doing to position yourselves to make a lot of money coming up here in the next couple of weeks, months, and years, uh, I'm going to need you to drop a sub, leave a like if you have not already. Um, if you dropped a like already, that's pretty impressive. Let's see from now on how quickly can we drop a like in each video. Uh, I'm doing a giveaway as a reminder. Once we get to 250 subs for an Amazon gift card, it kind of looks like we're going to be getting there pretty soon. So definitely get subbed. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts, feelings, everything about the market, everything that's going on. I would absolutely love to hear from you guys and let's get into the vid. So it is, I mean, it is one of probably the best days. I don't, I don't know like the history of best days in the market, but this has got to be up there rivaling some of the best days we have ever seen in regards to gains in a single day for a lot of these stocks that have been beaten down by the pandemic. So you saw at the early trading session, you saw some crazy news come out from Pfizer that a vaccine for, I'm not going to say the name of it because for whatever reason, YouTube likes to uh, not really help trending uh, the videos. Whenever you say the magic word, that is the thing that everyone is scared about right now that you could be infected with and potentially get sick. So I'm not going to say the magic word because YouTube doesn't like that. So Pfizer basically came out and said that their vaccine is 90% effective and then they are expecting to begin very soon with like being able to distribute the vaccine. So I think this is absolutely amazing and it's the single reason why you saw stocks just absolutely pop off today. I mean, they were trading up maybe, you know, 1% on the major indexes, uh, you know, pre-market, but after Pfizer came out and said this, the market went nuts. Airlines were up over 20% during the day. Um, you had, you know, companies like Visa, Disney. I think Disney was up like 15% at one point during the day. And this warms my heart because I bought Disney down its five year low, actually. At its five year low, I bought it back in March. And I've been holding and holding ever since. I am up like 75% on Disney. So I am super happy today. I hope you guys have been taking some of my advice and getting in on those airline stocks getting in on some of those stocks that, you know, had been beaten down, that, that they were off of their all-time high by, you know, 5, 10, 15 percent. And, you know, a lot of you are probably looking in the markets today seeing tech. Okay, tech isn't really doing amazing. They're obviously being outpaced by a lot of the other uh, industries that have been just absolutely crushed by COVID. So it's natural, right? You see people kind of pulling their money out of big tech, because that's the safe play in an uncertain environment. It's always big tech. Uh, that doesn't mean you should be scared and sell big tech because, oh, because they're not gaining today doesn't mean that they're going to be doing good in the future. Quite the opposite. I think that now, honestly, now is the time to continue to buy big tech because, you know, money eventually is going to come back into, you know, Microsoft and Apple and Amazon. I know Amazon Amazon's not really big tech, but you know, we'd be fooling ourselves if we didn't think these companies would do well. So don't sit there and just say, okay, because they didn't have a good day, or they didn't have a good day compared to the rest of the market. It doesn't mean these companies aren't a buy. Like I think the sell-off in Zoom, if you ask me, is a little, like it's it's very re reactionary by the market. Like, you know, for Zoom to be, a, you know, have a high of $588 and now it'll be trading down around like 400, that's very, uh, it's a very reactive response from the market. Likewise, I think airlines for them to be up, you know, 20, 25%, that's a bit, you know, too reactionary. Like, I, I mean, holding airline stocks, obviously I'm not complaining because, you know, as, as the share price increases, that makes me happy. But I do think that maybe, you know, it's, it's going to pull back a little bit. Like, obviously the news, uh, everybody in the morning, had, you know, bought everything up and now it has cooled off since. I do think that this in general is a very positive thing for the market. You're going to have split government more than likely. Obviously, the presidential election is not 100 percent set in stone. Uh, there is, you know, our, you know, Trump is taking, you know, litigations and stuff to the court. So potentially some stuff could change. But let's say even if anything were to change, 
you would still have a split government in the form of, you know, Congress is going to be Democrat and the, the Senate is going to be held by Republicans. So there you have it. Basically right there, you're guaranteed split government, irrespective of who even holds the presidency. So that is the general market and what is going on. It is like all smiles. I mean, you can't, you really can't complain. If you're a millennial, man, you should be throwing so much money in the market right now. Like it's, I don't want to say it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you can't lose, but if you're, if you're a, a student of history, if you put money in now, uh, even at, at like potentially all time highs, doesn't matter. You are going to make money in 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Like you are going to be fine. You are going to multiply your money by, you know, several multiples of whatever you put in. So that is it for the overall general market. So when we need to talk a little bit about Nikola Motors, because how can you ignore Nikola Motors? You would think that, hey, they've got earnings coming out today. Who knows what they're going to be doing? Who knows what they're going to be saying? General Motors reached an all-time high today. So you would think that if GM reached an all-time high, Nikola's probably doing well today, right? Wrong. Nikola is actually selling off quite nicely, actually. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of people and a lot of reasons uh, why this would be. I think the biggest is, right, earnings is today. I think investors are probably expecting some bad news. Uh, in this earnings call where, you know, they don't officially have a deal with General Motors or anything like that. And, you know, they're going to obviously report no revenue again for uh, the, I don't know what's the, the quarter. Uh, I mean, I feel like they've reported zero revenue for like several quarters now, which is not surprising. And the, I think the revenue, if anybody's like trying to fact check me in the comments, I think they did have revenue a couple of quarters ago, maybe because uh, Trevor Milton's solar panels. Uh, was put in by Nikola, but that doesn't really count. Let's let's take that out of the equation. So I think investors are basically pricing in a pretty bad earnings day here after the bell. And let's be honest, when you have a market condition like this, why would you be putting your money and buying up Nikola Motors on all these speculative plays when you just got news that basically these shutdowns and everything that is going to happen is likely coming to an end relatively soon, hopefully given this Pfizer vaccine and everything goes well. So given that, I think a lot of people are like, okay, we're going to take our money out of this. Uh, there's no incentive. There's no reason to buy this ahead of earnings. You know, you've got a lot of uncertainty going into earnings and you know, you've got amazing deals all around the market. So uh, I don't, I don't want to sit here and go, I think, I think what I'll do here in the future is make a video basically saying kind of like, these are some stocks that I recommended and these, these are how they're doing today. I don't want to do that. I don't think it's really fair to do that on a day like today because everything in the market is basically higher. So anybody, a, a blind person, you could have given a two year old a pencil and said, hey, circle some companies right here on the S&P 500 and every single one that they circle would be winning. So I don't think it's really fair to say, hey, look at these stock picks and this was good, good or bad advice that I gave you guys. But I think the one piece of advice that I want to continue to drill home when it comes to investing and what you should do with your money is you should be taking any pass or not passive, any extra money that you have every single month and making it work for you in some way, either paying off debt, like paying off mortgage debt or car debt or student loan debt. That is massively important. Being debt free is one of the most important things you can do in personal finance. But outside of that, the next best thing you need to be doing is investing your money. If you are under the age of 40, you should be investing your money in stocks forget bonds. There's really no reason to be in bonds when interest rates are as painfully low as they are. Every major uh, investor institution is pumping money into stocks because that is where the returns are, which means when you have everybody coming into stocks, that means stocks really uh, just continue and continue and continue to get bought up. You are more than likely going to be getting another big, big, big hefty stimulus bill as well as another round of stimulus checks going to uh, consumers. Not to mention, traditionally, markets absolutely love this time of year because guess what you have? You have holiday spending. Some of the best earnings reports are basically right after Q4, right after the holidays, um, or going, excuse me, going into the holidays. So now is the time to buy uh, you know, you could take a company like Best Buy, for example. I know they've been on an absolute tear, but if you look at, you know, some of these retailer stocks and just the, the yearly performance, they, they always kind of run off and tail off 
down in the middle months. And then once you get towards the holiday season, they build, they build, they build, they build, they build. And then, you know, January, February, they kind of pull back. And traditionally, that's how a lot of these stocks go. So uh, if you were looking for a quick in and out, maybe a retailer is the way to go, especially if we are getting a vaccine here soon, right around the corner. So guys, that is what I want to leave you with. If you found this video interesting or insightful or, you know, just anything like that, please let me know in the comments below. Drop a like, drop a sub. And before I let you go, today in history, 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall began. So that is pretty intense. And if there's any fellow Call of Duty fans out there, uh, first let me know in the comments below because if you've got a PlayStation, uh, shoot me your PSN and I'd love to play with you guys. Uh, but, you know, the new Call of Duty is coming out this Friday. Very excited about it. We've also got the new PlayStation 5 launching here on November 12th. I would absolutely love to get hands on, but it's unfortunate that no retailers are open to where you can actually line up. Everything is online. But, uh, you know, Sony was another stock that I said, hey, you might want to think about buying. And I was saying that back in, uh, what was it, like September when they, you know, officially announced the PS5 and their share price has gone from like 70 to $90. So I'm just saying, just saying. But guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you tomorrow.